creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Be afraid. You smell wrong. It is. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a... No! The flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. We need a photo. No one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. I am not palatable. Do not eat me. I am afraid. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He's letting his pride get in the way. You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. Understood, of course. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you, its antennae taking their measure. A sudden chirrup fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body, limbs working independently of each other, like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. It moves just an inch closer to you, or does it only feel like it does. Something in its body language has changed just slightly. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest you reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue to expanding, like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. The insect stops its stridulation seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Careful, it may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like
like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, white blossoms erupting. A sensation like cold hands on your face. Tell me what he's like for you. Yes, holy is the Lord of hosts, and all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what he's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-naked images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist, shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never age. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute empathy for you. That must be incredibly hard. The orthopods are in silent and meaningless awe of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up, but from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in the sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. In honor of your will, Lieutenant Euphrater, that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror, day after day, second by second. Detective arriving on the scene. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Yes, no one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years, I did it out of sight trapped myself in greenery. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. I am an all known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolindia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cooling myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. No, 
No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping off blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Yes, I do not have a starter display, so I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry, it is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. No. You are the miracle. It was you, coming from the west. From the whirling. You were coming. The moral of our encounter is... I am a relatively medium life form. While you are extreme. All engulfing madness. A volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if? You misplace us all one day, or just forget. No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. Please be. Or one day, one of you will close your eyes and sign and open them to see that none of this ever existed. It doesn't look like that, no. You're just staring at it. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? I think we should take the picture and then you should back away from the unstudied species. It doesn't look like the you're just staring at it. Okay. I think we should take the picture and then you should back away from the unstudied species. No. It was you. The more of the pale too. King it is in the a violent voices that instead of air, you everything your eyes touch goes back there. Behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Please be. Or oh, one no. There is one more. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion. 
while it's being aimed by the camera, it remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. The sweat on your arms feels cold as ice, as if you're frozen as well, in the shadow of this great statue of chitinous marble. I got it. Immortalized for all time. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike, odorless, mostly comprised of water. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. A small shadow passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The stimulus overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water and something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Apparently, yes, like a water strider, only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have looked. What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. 